guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a different, completely different type of video for you guys. I'm going to be doing a review, roundup, overall thoughts, yay or nay, on all of the books that I have read thus far in my quarantine. I'm not going to be doing any summaries of the books themselves because that's easy enough to get online. I'm just going to be giving my personal thoughts after having read the book. Did I like it? Did I not? And the reasoning why. So yeah, let's get into the eight reads that I've read so far and why I liked them or why I did it. This is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This book details the events and then the process of investigation for the Golden State Killer. The Golden State Killer was actually caught and arrested about two months, a month or so after this book was released, which is crazy. So this is from a perspective of not yet having caught the killer. Very detail oriented, talks a lot about the victims themselves, which I always love hearing more about. Just very, very interesting, really detailing, disturbing if you're not into this kind of stuff. Definitely a very good novel, very well written, and very interesting. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, it's definitely a must read, especially looking back, having now caught the killer and being able to have that image in your mind as you're reading this, even though the author didn't, is very, very interesting. So yeah, definitely would recommend this guy. The first of my fiction reads is The Gold Finch by Donna Tart. This was um, gifted to me by my dad. He read it, enjoyed it, and thought that I would enjoy it as well. It is a very popular book in the last like year or so. It's been on 5 million bestseller lists. It won the Pulitzer Prize. It is 771 pages, so it's definitely a bigger read. I definitely enjoyed this book, but it is a very heavy read and it's a lot to get through. The concept of the story is very interesting. I would say for the first like 200 pages, I read very quickly. I was very interested and then kind of near the middle and towards the end, I it kind of lost me. The writing in this is absolutely incredible. I was really able to visualize the characters, the storyline. It didn't lose me in that sense, which is for me really important when I'm reading to be able to very much visualize what's happening. And typically I need to like the character in order, at least the main character, in order to enjoy the novel. This one had me kind of flip-flopping on his character. It is very depressing, especially towards the end. It's just kind of like an existential read and typically when I'm reading, especially reading fiction, I like to read as an escape even though I read like thriller true crime stuff. It's still very much an escape for me and I'm not so much thinking when I'm reading it. This one really provokes you to think a lot of the time, especially like the last 100 pages is a massive reflection on his life. I'm glad I read it but it did um, cause me to think and like not feel great at times which isn't what you necessarily want to be feeling right now so it's up to you I enjoyed it next we have one of my favorite books of the bunch this one as well as the next one was um, loaned to me from a friend who also reads a lot we exchanged books in a social distancing manner I put mine on her car and she put hers on my car so this is Verity by Colleen Hoover I hadn't at all heard of this book before she loaned it to me but I absolutely loved this book. I devoured it. I read this in less than 24 hours. I stayed up to like 1 a.m. one night reading it, which is what I want in a book. I love to be able to escape, not put it down, read it in one sitting. I'm very much that kind of person. Whereas with The Goldfinch for me, it was like a two week process. I was picking it up, putting it down, reading 100 pages at a time, which is not usual for me. If I'm into a book, I'll read it in a day if it's doable. Um, and I was able to do that with this one which I loved. This book is a thriller kind of but it's more of just like a mind F. I loved the characters in this book. I was really able to picture the characters. I've heard really great things as well about Colleen Hoover as an author so if you've read any of her other books and have recommendations leave them down below. I've already gone ahead on Goodreads and screenshotted some of her more popular ones but definitely let me know what do you think if you've read this or if you've read anything by her because 
because I really really enjoyed this one. We have the other book that my friend loaned me. This again is a kind of thriller mind F. This one even more so than Verity I would say because you're kind of thinking one thing until the very very end of the novel. This is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. Really enjoyed this one. This was another one that I read in probably less than two days. I enjoyed the way it was written, but not overwhelmingly so. I didn't love any of the characters in it, which as I said, for me is like very important. I like to like the characters. It didn't necessarily go in the direction that I had thought that it was going to, which I always enjoy in a novel, which is why I like thrillers and things that kind of make you think differently or it turns out differently than you think it's going to. It wasn't like one of my top three out of the eight, but I would definitely recommend. I enjoyed it a lot. Now we have The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. This is another one that's on a lot of bestseller lists at the moment. It's being recommended by Chapters, Barnes & Noble on all their displays. Purchased it for that reason, just saw it in the recommended and decided to pick it up and I honestly didn't enjoy this as much as I thought I was going to. The um, little synopsis on the back is definitely very intriguing and it was a bit of a twisty read. Um, I was reading some reviews on Goodreads as I always do and a lot of people felt that it was very twisted and dark. I didn't find that so much but again I consume a ton of true crime like disturbing content so this book didn't really bother me. Again, it didn't necessarily go the way that I thought it was going to, but I was interested in the storyline throughout. I wasn't a big fan of any of the characters or the writing style of this book so much. So just not loving the characters, not loving the writing style kind of didn't make me enjoy this one as much as I thought I would, but the actual concept itself is very cool and it was an okay read. Definitely like in the middle of my middle to bottom of the eight that I read. Now we have Perfect Little Children by Sophie Hanna. Um, again, number one New York Times bestseller, recommended a lot right now, and I absolutely loved this book. I thought it was so good, so interesting, led in a different way than I thought that it was going to. Wasn't as like at all dark and disturbing as the others. It was just more interesting and I enjoyed the characters. This one was a little more like playful and lighthearted than the other ones that I had been reading before and after it. So it was a nice break. It was very interesting. I kept wanting to know where the story was going to go. Characters are very fun. The main protagonist is just enjoyable to read about and read her perspective and then her family as well is very cute and it's just a nice light-hearted read but also like a mystery and very interesting and enjoyable to really devour in a day or two which is what I like so really recommend this one. It was good. Okay the next one is another one that's a New York Times bestseller. Everyone's recommending it on all of the book sites right now. This is Kathy Reaches A Conspiracy of Bones and I did not enjoy this book. This is I guess a series of her protagonist Temperance Brennan who is a forensic anthropologist. I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't find the characters, any of the characters enjoyable. I wasn't able to picture any of it very well in my head. I didn't like the writing style. It seemed very jumbled and haphazard in some places. I didn't know how she got to certain points and it seemed like there was some things uh, left out. I just was not a big fan of this. I read reviews and on Goodreads and people didn't really seem to have the same thoughts as me. I guess because it's a series, people know that going into it, are loyal to this series or they're not. It wasn't that dark and it wasn't that interesting and I don't think it was that well written, which I hate saying because obviously I'm not an author and I can't imagine how difficult it would be to write a book, but as a reader, as a consumer, I just didn't enjoy the writing style and yeah. I would not recommend this one. The last book is from one of my favorite authors ever and that is Margaret Atwood. This is the follow-up book to The Handmaid's Tale which is, if you didn't know, probably you wouldn't know, Handmaid's Tale is one of my favorite books ever and also one of my favorite TV shows ever. It is 
so so well done and I just love the writing. I've read Handmaid's Tale now twice. This is The Testaments. It came out earlier this year I believe. I asked for it for Christmas and this was gifted to me for Christmas by my mom and I just got around to reading it now. Thinking back to the first book and then to this, I definitely enjoyed Handmaid's Tale better. I think just because I love the perspective, inner thoughts of the main character so much and none of the same characters really are involved in this. This one flips through three different perspectives which I think is really interesting and especially in the way this novel is set up being dystopian and being a sequel. The three perspectives gives you a really good idea of the society that it takes place in and for me it makes it easier to visualize especially if you hadn't read the first one. I consumed this again in like just under 20 24 hours. It was such a good read and I would highly, highly recommend. Please, please comment down below if you have recommendations for me, especially if they're in this genre, but even if they're not, anything fiction pretty much I will read. If you've read any of these and you have thoughts that align with me or contradict me, let me know. I'd love to hear them and chat down below. But with all of that, that is everything that I have for you guys today. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.